Eden, Eugenia, Bethel, North. Amen, amen. I am so humbled and honored to be standing behind this holy desk. Even though I stand up here every Sunday, it's different when you're standing up here uh, with the word from the Lord. So I want to thank our pastor, Pastor C, my spiritual father, and happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And yes, mothers, it is Father's Day. And if we could not have these children, amen. I know somebody's going to get mad. They're like, mm. uh, we could not have these children, hallelujah, without fathers. So thank God for fathers, amen. Thank God, thank God for fathers. But there is a word from the Lord this morning, so I don't want to be here before you long. Y'all know me. I like to say what the Lord want me to say, and then I like to sit down. And I just want to thank God for my two blessings, my number ones for Janae and RJ. And we just praise God. RJ graduated. And he's going to PG, Community College. I'm sorry, I just got to take a mama moment. This is what happened when you had the mic. You know, you a PK kid, you know. This is what happens. So I'm just going to take a mama moment, a mama liberty, because uh, this week my son got awarded the Promise Scholarship at PG Community College. And if you don't know what that is, that means he gets to go tuition free for up to three years. I, I, I'm going to say that again. Tuition free. Tuition free. I, I don't know about you, but I, was, I had to contain myself in the office. I was about to start shouting up in there. Tuition free. Hallelujah. And it covers the books. Hallelujah. 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 But now we're going to get back to the word. Hallelujah. Amen. So our sermon topic this morning is the helper. The helper, the helper. Turn to your neighbor and say, the helper. The helper, the helper. So Father's Day was inaugurated in the United States in the early 20th century to complement Mother's Day in celebrating fathers, fathering, and fatherhood. Father's Day was founded in Spoken, Washington at the YMCA in 1910. I'm sure y'all didn't know that because I didn't know either. So Sonora Smart died, who was born in Arkansas, wanted to celebrate her father, William Jackson Smart, because he was a single parent raising six children. But uh, for those of us who, who know the Bible, we know that Father's Day and Mother's Day really began when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. And the fourth commandment was given that said, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land which the Lord gives. And, and while Jesus had Joseph as his earthly father to raise and protect and nurture him, Jesus also understood the relationship with his heavenly father at an early age. So you remember when Jesus went with his parents to Jerusalem for the Passover feast and in the gospel of Luke 2 verses 41 through 51. This is when Jesus was 12 years old. And after the festival, they returned to Nazareth and then they realized Jesus wasn't with them, that he had stayed behind in Jerusalem. And at first, Joseph and Mary, they didn't realize it, but then they realized he wasn't with them. And, and this is how I know, Pastor C, that Mary was a black mother. Amen. Amen. Because as soon as they went back to Jerusalem and she saw Jesus, she was the first one who said something. Joseph was calm and relaxed, but Mary was like, what? Do you know that we have been worried about you? That we have been frantic? Why, 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 would, you, why would you do that to us? Why would you do that to us? That, that, that sounds like something you would have said to, to one of your children. Why would you do that? You know you were supposed to be in here at 12 o'clock and now it's 1 a.m. I've been sitting up all night worried about you. Why would you do that to us? But Jesus said, well, I don't know why you was worried about me. Because I was about my father's business. And so that, then that's when you know that he had an earthly father. Because Joseph stepped right in and intervened. Because, you know, I know Mary wanted to probably slap him, give him a beating right there. Talk about what he mean he was in the father's house. We've been worried. We had to come all the way back. This ain't around the corner, you know. We on foot here. But Joseph was like, it's all right. Let's all just go back to Nazareth. So on that way back to Nazareth, I'm sure Joseph had a long talk with Jesus in the back while Mary was still fussing in the front. He was just like, don't say nothing. Just be quiet. Don't say nothing. Don't do nothing. Whatever your mother says, that, that's what it is. Oh, and by the way, when we get back to Nazareth, 
Don't ask to go anywhere, but to come to the carpentry room with me. Don't ask to go in the field with your friends. Don't even ask to go to the temple unless you with us. Do you understand me? And of course, just like any good son, Jesus didn't say anything back. Because you know when fathers say something, they don't say anything back. But when mothers say something, we get a lot of lip service. But when your father says something, what do they say? Yes, sir. Okay. Whatever you say, Dad. I'm going to do what you say. Yes. Being a father teaches you how to be a protector, a provider, a negotiator. It teaches you how to be a disciplinarian and a comforter and a counselor and yes, a helper. All of us can attest to some to learning something from our fathers or father figures, godfather, maybe it was uncle or older brother. They they taught you something. Amen. They maybe they taught you how to ride a bike or drive a car or change tires or they taught you how to tie a tie. And and even some fathers, yes, we have to admit, some fathers do know how to cook. So they taught you how to cook. They taught you the importance of being a gentleman and opening doors and pulling out chairs and how you treat a woman and how you respond. Specter. Our father figures taught us the importance of keeping your word. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. They taught you about respecting authority. Look them in their eyes. Say yes, ma'am. Say no, sir, when someone is talking to you. And the list goes on and on. Our fathers, our father figures, they have been and they still are our help. But near the end of his ministry, when Jesus was talking to the disciples in John 14, 16 through 17, 17, he talked about another kind of helper. And I will pray in the Father, and he shall give you another, a comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwell with you, and she, he shall be with you. The New Living Translation states it like this, and he shall give you another, a counselor, an advocate, and he will never leave you. And the Good News Translation states, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever. He is the spirit who reveals the truth about God. And the world cannot receive him because he cannot see him or know him, but you know him because he remains with you and is in you. The Holy Spirit is referred to as a comforter, counselor, advocate, and helper. And Webster's Dictionary defines comforter as someone who helps you to feel less worried and upset. It helps you to feel less frightened. Someone who comforts you. A counselor is a person that gives advice. An advocate is someone who pleads the cause of another. And a helper is someone who helps another with a job or a task. So, Pastor C, in other words, Jesus was prophesying to the disciples that the Father was going to send them a comforter. Someone who would help them feel less worried, less upset, and less frightened. Someone who comforts, a counselor, who gives advice, an advocate who pleads their case, a helper, someone to help them with doing their jobs and their tasks, and someone who would reveal the truth about God. But Jesus said he would have to leave us in order for the comforter, counselor, advocate, and helper to remain with us. So on the day of Pentecost, that was seven weeks after the resurrection of Jesus, which we celebrated last Sunday, when they were in the upper room, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So I just stopped by this morning to demystify the Holy Spirit. Peter preached to the crowd in the upper room in Acts 2, 16 and 18, I will pour out my spirit upon all people and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit upon all my servants, men and women alike, and will prophesy. Peter was lifting up what was written in Joel 2, 28 and 29. The last days and all the days between Christ first and second coming and another way of saying from now on peter wanted the crowd to understand the holy spirit was being poured out to everybody say everybody everybody jews gentiles slaves men and women from now on the holy spirit was going to live with us to be our comforter and our advocate and our helper 
from now on. We won't have to be worried or frightened because we have the spirit dwelling within us. He will be our counselor. He will give us advice from now on. He will be our advocate who pleads our case sitting on the right hand of Father. He will be our helper from now on. Someone who helps us with our task and our job. Well, if the Holy Spirit is described as a comforter and a counselor and a helper, then why are some of us afraid to allow the Holy Spirit to help us? Y'all want to know why? I'm so glad y'all asked. Amen. I'm going to tell y'all why. I, I'm going to tell you why. You, you, because, you see, beloved, we don't really understand the attributes of the Holy Spirit. So we allow our flesh to control us instead of allowing the Spirit to have full reign in our lives. Can, can we have Bible study for a minute? Amen, amen, amen. Because we talked about this in Bible study on Pastor C's birthday. Right, the Lord? We talked about this. Amen. We talked about this. So we're just going to talk about it for a minute. It says that uh, uh, the Scriptures tell us that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. In Acts 13, 2, the Holy Spirit spoke to the church at Antioch, Antioch and told them to dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the special work for them. The scripture goes on to tell us that they, they had to do more fasting and praying so that they could hear from the Spirit and lay hands. Uh, Paul, Barnabas and Saul were dedicated for service because the Spirit spoke to Antioch because they had did more praying and fasting. The Spirit spoke to Antioch because they had did more praying and fasting. And, and see, the problem is we, 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 I said we, I said we, 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 we don't want to do more praying and fasting. We don't want to get rid of the distractions in our lives. We want to eat whatever we want to eat when we want to eat it. We want to go wherever we want to go. And then we want to spend five minutes in prayer. And then we'll say, the Holy Spirit ain't speaking to me. I can't hear him. I don't know what he's saying. I, I don't know. What, the, the Holy Spirit isn't talking to me. But the Bible says that he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. It doesn't say just for the preacher. Amen. It says to all of us. That means the musicians, those of y'all sitting in the pews right now. Yes, in the chairs. Amen. It's going to pour out his spirit on all of us. But in order for us to hear from the spirit. We got to get rid of some of our distractions. Amen. We all love social media. I love social media. I post a lot of stuff on social media. I post positive things. I post the scriptures. I post about working out. Amen. Because I like to encourage people. And, and, and But sometimes we, we don't need to be on social media. Sometimes we... That it shouldn't be the first thing we do when we wake up in the morning. Sometimes if we reach for our phone, like Facebook is the newspaper, before we reach for the word, before we get on our knees. Sometimes we just got to remove the distractions. I mean, I love my swords. I love my kids. I, I, I love giving advice and everything. But sometimes I just got to remove the distractions. See, because I wanted to hear from the Holy Spirit to preach, after I went to sorority meeting yesterday, the rest of the day, I was in the house. I could have went somewhere. Somebody was, all, all, everybody I know is turning 50, amen. So every time I turn around, there's another event. Somebody's planning another uh, dinner party, party. So I was invited to come, and I was just like, no, I'm not going to be able to come because I had to get ready for the word. So I, I got to be still and be quiet and cut out some of the distractions and not get on Facebook, not, not turn on the TV, not even be on my phone because I want to hear from the Spirit. And then I had to fast and, and, and pray. Then I had to fast and pray. Fasting and praying is not a dirty word. Amen. Y'all say it with me. Fasting and praying. One more time. Fasting and praying. And one more time for the Holy Spirit. Fasting and praying. Amen. Amen. That is not a bad word. We want to be able to hear from the Spirit. The second point is the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. In Romans 8, 26, it tells us that the Holy Spirit helps us in our distress. For we don't even know what we should pray for or how we should pray. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groaning that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads with us in harmony with God's own will. 
with God's own will. Remember, the Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us with a job or a task. So our task is praying. But if the truth be told, sometimes we are so distraught about life and our circumstances that, that we don't know what to pray. Amen. We don't know how to pray. But it says the Holy Spirit, he's a good advocate and he goes to God on our behalf. It's like when I'm praying, the Holy Spirit is instantly translating my prayers. See, I'm a social worker and I, uh, I have some Spanish speaking clients, so I use a language line. So the language line, I talk to the translator, the interpreter, and I'll say something like, good morning. And then she'll translate it to the Spanish family. She'll say, buenos dias. I know a little bit. <laughs> she'll translate it to the Spanish person. So it's just like the same thing with the Holy Spirit. It's like when we're praying, then he t translates what we're saying to the Father. Amen. To make sure it comes out correctly. So I'm, I'm a make it plain for you. I'll get this in your mind. So maybe I'm praying for a financial increase. And the Holy Spirit translated it to God like this. And I was supposed to be like, Lord, please give me a financial blessing. And the Holy Spirit translated, Father, help Erica to stop taking her lunch to work every day. To start taking her lunch to work every day so she will see an increase in her finances. See, we are, we are just praying for the end result, but the Holy Spirit prays for specific situations specific situations you are praying for a new job and the holy spirit is praying for your career that your, your your career will put you in the right position to meet with the right interviewer who knows christ and will see god's spirit in you so when you go to the interview you will get favor of the lord and that the position that you will receive will help you to grow not only professionally but spiritually we don't know how to pray. The Holy Spirit is interceding for us, just as Jesus interceded in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Because sometimes we, if we tell the truth and shame the devil, we, we don't always want God's will in our lives, okay? I'm going to make it real plain because y'all looking at me like, what's she talking about? Okay, so I'm going to just make it plain. So since I've been on this road to 50, I gave up sugar i gave up sweets well well let, let me say i i tried real hard i tried real hard I, I most days i was successful amen so but then there were those moments where i'm like well i worked out for an hour i had a green smoothie i drank my 64 ounces of water so i deserve to have some chocolate cake amen but i but i can hear the holy spirit say you don't eat any cake but then that's when we want to question spirit like i didn't hear anything because you want the Holy Spirit to come and arrest you. Give me the cake! <laughs> but that's not what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is gentle. He comes to you and whisper, amen, just like he came to Elijah. And he tells you, you don't need the cake. That cake is not good for you. You know you have goals, amen. You know that dress you wanted to wear again that's been sitting in your closet for the last we're not going to say how long. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we have to listen to the Holy Spirit and allow him to intercede for us and hear our prayers. It, but because we are the church and, 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 and we are flesh, we, we have to not give in. You see, if we're going to have visions, it says he'll pour out his spirit and give us visions and dreams. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to be our helper. Amen. That's why Pastor C has great vision. Amen. That's why God has started to give me visions for UB North. Because we are asking for the helper to help us. We, we can't do it by ourselves. We don't know the direction that God would have us to go. We can't figure it out by ourselves. But with the Holy Spirit, our helper. We can figure it out. When, and, and, and then in Acts chapter three, chapter three, a lame man, a lame man from birth was begging outside of the temple each day. It was called the Beautiful Gate, and he would beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go in the temple, he asked them for money, but Peter gave him something much better. He gave him the use of his legs we often ask God to solve a small problem but he wants to give us a whole new life he wants to teach us through the Holy Spirit not to just give us what we want but to give us what we need 
Peter healed the lame man not in his own power, but he healed him through the power of the Holy Spirit because he said, in the name of Jesus Christ. Through the Holy Spirit's power, he was able to heal him and lay hands on him and intercede for him. It is through the Holy Spirit that we have power. It is through the Holy Spirit that he is our helper. We can't have the fruits of the Spirit. Y'all know the fruits of the Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We love to say these, right? The fruits of the Spirit are. But the only way we can have the fruits of the Spirit is if we allow the Holy Spirit to help us. Amen? Because people are going to do things to get on our nerves. Amen? But that's when we have to pray to the Holy Spirit. Let my conversation be with grace. Amen? That's why if you didn't think your father knew God, you, you, you know he had one of the Holy Spirits. He had one, one of the fruits of the Spirit, which was patience, when he was teaching you how to drive. Amen? Kindness. We can show some kindness to other people when we have the Holy Spirit and goodness and faithfulness. We, we can be faithful and we can practice self-control and not eat the cake when we have the Holy Spirit. How many of you want the helper to help you? Amen. How many of you want the helper to help you? Now you understand what the Holy Spirit does. He helps us. He's our advocate he he intercedes for us so he goes to God before us even when we don't say things right and do things right so we don't have to act like the Holy Spirit is this spooky thing it's our helper amen won't you stand to your feet so maybe there's someone who wants to come and give Jesus your heart and your hand he wants to give you visions and dreams. But the only way he can do that is if you have the Holy Spirit. And the way you get the Holy Spirit is real simple. You confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. And it's just like that. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. Now, how we give the Holy Spirit we reign over our lives is by the way we, the closer we get to Jesus. And so that's why we come to church, so we can get closer to Jesus. That's why we go come to Bible study, so we can get closer to Jesus. That's why we spend time praying when we're not here. Amen. That's why we spend time in the Word when we're not here. So we can get closer to Jesus. So we can hear Jesus speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. So maybe there's one who wants to give God your hand and your heart. Amen. Amen. Maybe there's one or maybe there's one who's had a lot of distractions. So you haven't been able to hear the Holy Spirit leading you. And it's okay, because we all have that sometimes. But all you have to do is recommit yourself to Jesus. And he'll come back in and speak to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Maybe there's one more. I know there's two more. So I ain't trying to put nobody on the spot. That's just what the Holy Spirit said. So. And we'll wait for you. It's okay. It's all right. We'll wait for you. If God loves you so much that he'll wait for you. It's no rush. Amen. There's one more. Won't you come? Won't you come? Yeah. You keep trying to figure out what God wants you to do. And he wants you to speak to you. Amen. I can always find it. Won't you come? There one ordinary, more. The ordinary, just won't do Amen. Amen. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah.